Just gonna do this, and then I can begin. <laughs> wow. Look at what I'm doing. Life's really changed. It was only two years ago that my life, my entire life, has shifted. I was just living a life. My parents were good. My home was comfortable. It was a content existence. But then one day, I walked to the manor. It slowly became harder and harder to force my lungs to get air. It was only a few moments before I saw the orange glow of flames flickering inside the house. Instinctively, I ran to the door, pulling on the door handle. I tried to feel free myself from the smoke, but it was locked. The key we kept near eluded me. As I choked on the smoke, the fire continued to spread. The manor had begun to collapse. Shards of planks and woods and stones fell onto the ground. I looked around, frantically trying to find an escape. I still can't look at the fire the same. Inside the manor, I tried to find an escape. I'd fallen to the ground from choking on the smoke. A plank of smoking wood hit my head. My head hit the ground into a piece of burning stone. Fire hit my eyes. It hurt beyond comprehension. Now a burn scar sits on my eye. Luckily, I can still look with it. One was almost completely gone. The other was just holding on. Through watery eyes, I saw the window. Father told me that was weak. It would only take a hitting to break it. But I was too weak. I was too weak to kick it. And what would I do in a moment of clarity? I saw a piece of stone that had fallen from the roof. Flames flickered on, but despite it, I grabbed it. My hands had begun to burn. My will began to flare. With the stone, I bashed into the window. The glass shattered onto the ground outside, and now I had an escape. I crawled out to it through the window, glass piercing to skins on my hands. Just as I reached the outside, I saw someone walking slowly away. My body was too weak to chase them, but I knew they had set the fire. A rage, an instinct, in my body me it was so. Slumping away from the house, I only realized I was not alone in the manor. <laughs> I cried out, praying that mum and dad had also made it out. But then, the house, as it burned, then it collapsed. That is when I realized nothing was the same. I wept next to the burning wood of the stone. Mum and dad, my life was gone. After a long while, a fire truck had arrived. They grabbed me, pulled me out from the fire, as I was too weak to fight back. While in hospital, my family came to visit me, my two uncles and aunt. 
I wasn't in hospital for a long time when I was discharged. My younger uncle took me into his home. In that time, I stood in my hatred and sadness. I wept and thought of a plan to annihilate whoever had done this. I had to. They deserved to be destroyed. Over the next few days, I tried to figure out whoever could have done this. The clothing, the fact they knew how to get rid of the keys. I think they locked the windows as well. They realized where we were. So many factors eventually collided into my realization. The man who took me in, he had done it. My father's younger brother. That same day, while my uncle was at work, I investigated his room, until I eventually found a small book hidden away. Its content confirmed my suspicion. It talked about how my uncle hated my mom and dad. He wanted their life. Jealous of the life they had. My blood rushed hot through my body. I only wanted to destroy him. Every day, I was fueled with rage. Eventually, I seeked out people to help with my task. Well, hello there. A bit young, aren't you? You all kill people for hire, right? We do. Who do you want dead? My uncle killed my parents. I want to kill him. I need help with the disposal. Easy enough. Got payment? How much is it? Fifteen thousand. I can do it. All right. Pleasure doing business with you. This person eventually became a close friend of mine. They and their co-workers seemed to be friends who were just damaged by their past, without a leader or order. This person and I agreed to make group. We called it the Red Lotus Syndicate. None of them would know who I was. Only this friend would know who I was. The amount of money that my parents has turned out to be useful, as it was part of this agreement to fund the syndicate. Over the next two weeks, I would live in my uncle's house. Hatred and thoughts of murder filled my head. The Red Lotus Syndicate and I had begun to stalk him, figuring out when he was most vulnerable. Until one day, the day when he walked through an alleyway to get home. I sat in it, a knife in my hand. The Red Lotus Syndicate sat nearby, ready to assist me in cleaning up. Other than the guys, that I was a client. Then, his figure away appeared. At the end of the alleyway, walking towards me. What? I'll kill you for killing them. You! You're not the only one with a knife. You should have died with your parents. That's when you stabbed me in my eye. Finishing it off completely from what had already happened in the house fire. You, you wouldn't actually kill your uncle, right? No, no, no. Hmm, seems like this is done. We'll take it from here. You, client, come with me. 
We'll help your eye. It was done. He was killed. And no one would find his body. They said they dismembered him and threw him in the ocean. The Red Lotuses had fixed up my eye in an underground hospital. My eye is gone. Only my scarred eyes work now. With my parents' money, I bought a small property in a silent place. It took me a long time to get a state of normality. Eventually, I find that speaking into a microphone comforted me. Spending my time trying to make others feel loved. That's all. The end of a story. With a happyish ending. Thank you.